Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel for another rant session. So today I'm going to be talking about my journey, or I wouldn't even say journey, but I guess my progression with breaking up with the notion of luxury. So I started thinking about this recently because, I mean, I started my internship recently. And for the first time ever, I have enough money that I can call my own, where I can go out with friends on the weekends and like grab a few meals and, you know, pick up something from Sephora or buy like a couple pieces of clothing without, you know, breaking the bank. And at the very beginning, before I started my internship, I was going through all these like luxury items that I wanted to buy. So like those like Van Cleef bracelets and like a Miu Miu bag or I was looking through actually several different like luxury brand bags and seeing like which one I could afford can I save up for like the 3000 bag, $3,000 bag or will I feel okay dropping 5k for a bag and that was my plan for like half a year before I started my internship but once I actually started my internship I felt like my perspective of how I spend my money kind of changed a little bit and it shifted towards more of a what can I derive the most utility from for anyone that isn't familiar with the term like utility I guess it's like a really basic term but if anyone isn't it's like an economic term and I have it pulled up on my iPad here. So the official definition according to Google is the total amount of satisfaction someone experiences when they consume a particular product or service. So I guess like to put in layman's terms, in my situation it would be what would I feel most comfortable and happy spending my money on? And I guess as I've been spending my money like going out with my friends on weekends like shopping and eating, I realized that with my financial status at the moment, spending thousands of dollars on one luxury item is not going to give me much utility. In fact, it might actually make me anxious and feel like I made a mistake or I did something irresponsible. Growing up middle class, I felt like I had a weird relationship with the notion of money and luxury. And for context, my family is like smack middle middle class or at least like I think we are. And just to preface, I know I'm like really fortunate to have never had to experience food insecurity and like I never had to worry about the next meal and I've never had to even think about oh whether or not my family will be able to pay like the basic bills and I know that's like a privilege that millions of Americans don't get to experience. Putting that aside, I spent pretty much my entire life in a town where the average salary was like two to three hundred K or something like that. Something in the multi six figs. And I know that's well above the national average. And I guess if that's the average, I went to school with a lot of kids whose parents were I wouldn't say obscenely wealthy, but they had like a good amount of money. And oftentimes I started noticing in middle school, but people will come to school with like new Lululemon every other day or every other week. And then if you add those things up, it's like hundreds of dollars, maybe like thousands in like branded clothes for a middle school student. But also if you break it down, like two to 300K isn't that much money in today's world. Say like an average family has two kids and each kid both of them decide to go to college and neither of them get astounding scholarships, then that's like hundreds of thousands of dollars gone. And say the parents themselves also have student loans and they have like mortgages, car payments, whatever, and they need to support maybe their grandparents. That two to 300K like household income could also be stretched pretty thin. But I guess going back and focusing on today's topic, when I was younger, my aunt is very like luxury obsessed or she she used to be i don't know if she still is and i remember my mom telling me that apparently when i was really young like i was probably four or five we were in taiwan and we were like shopping around with my aunt and apparently my aunt said something like by the way you know that store we're about to go to is really expensive and i guess implying that you know maybe my mom can't afford what's in that store and my mom told me that apparently i said to her in that moment that luxury is just what you like and you could define your own sense of luxury and i had no recollection of me ever saying this but when she told me that i was like those are wise words from like a five-year-old and when i thought about it recently i did feel like luxury is really just a construct and you could define luxury however you want to say someone with like a 20k salary they will probably find a 100 dollar bag to be like extremely luxurious which honestly like 100 dollars for a bag is a good amount in, in and of itself but to someone who for example maybe makes like half a million per year a 100 dollar bag wouldn't be counted as luxury and it's like it's weird for you to argue like one way or the other and neither of them are wrong i guess i was about to say like different standards of living but that also doesn't seem like exactly right and i guess i first started noticing brands and all that when i was in middle school which i feel like is like 
the common age for most girls and my parents or my dad he really doesn't care for brands so he knows them and he like appreciates it but he doesn't go out to buy it and i think he appreciates it when someone gives him like something branded but he himself would never go and buy something like luxury and my mom is very much a quantity over quality person whereas i've kind of strayed from that because i see her buy things in excess that she doesn't that she buys because they're on sale but she doesn't actually like them so then we just have like a whole bunch of clothes in our house from like i don't know forever 21 or something from five years ago that we don't even like that she doesn't like because she bought it on sale because she thought it was a good deal in that moment and because it's on sale like you can't return it and i don't want it because it's not my style so yeah i just thought it was a bit of an annoying habit and therefore i'm very much a quality over quantity person but because my parents are like that when i was in middle school like imagine like a 12 year old girl like coming to her parents saying oh i want to buy these 100 dollars shoes or whatever like the most the most they've ever indulged me when i was in middle school i think was when they let me get those ugg boots and those were I would say like I would say around a hundred dollars maybe a little more but because my parents never really bought other expensive stuff for me back then I felt like I as a result became more conscious of it and you know like when you're in middle school you're trying to fit in and at the time like I didn't really have that many friends this was like sixth seventh grade so I didn't really have that many friends I was trying to fit in but I felt like I didn't have the apparel and like the uniform to fit in and I was I was also really shy and another weird thing is that I guess nowadays I would just wear whatever I like and I'll wear whatever I like and I don't really care what other people think. It's a weird like self-conscious thing because at the same time like part of me is like yes wear whatever you want just be yourself and who cares what anyone else thinks right but another part of me is like i'm scared to walk on the street and have people look at me weirdly an example of that would be like my tattoos like the other day i went to the grocery store with my dad and i was wearing like shorts a t-shirt and shorts and i felt a little bit self-conscious because i felt like some of the older people were looking at me but at the same time like when i look in the mirror at home I really like my tattoos so it's like still a weird mixture of emotions and this feeling of being self-conscious is something that i've kind of been battling since forever it feels like i remember the summer before i started middle school my mom went to taiwan or actually we both went and we got like a bunch of really cute shirts for me and they weren't formal but i would say they weren't like t-shirts that kids would normally wear to school but i really like them and i will wear them to school but as soon as i set foot in the school building i felt so self-conscious and i felt like everyone was looking at me but to be honest nobody nobody was like who cares like who who was i but i felt like everyone was staring at me and as a result after like the first two weeks of school i stopped wearing those shirts even though i really like them and i would wear like the plain outfit just to blend in and even when i did get some of the clothes that were like trendy say like some of the athleisure or whatever i felt shy to wear it in school like wanted to enjoy these luxury items but at the same time i was afraid to which is so weird and because my parents weren't super into brands i had no idea what under armor was or what adidas or even what converse were so back in sixth grade i would see what i now know is like converse like everyone was wearing converse and i wanted to fit in so my parents and i went to the mall and we went to wet seal i don't know if i feel like nobody Nobody even knows what that store is we had one in my mall at the time this was like 2014 and i feel like it's like a very millennial store because i would watch like og youtubers and they would talk about this but for some reason there was still a wet seal i guess that one just hadn't gone bankrupt yet so they had these converse knockoffs but at the time i didn't know there were knockoffs and i got them and i wore them to school and then like a month later i realized that there was like the little converse logo on the back of the shoe that Con all converse shoes have and mine didn't have that and then for some reason it was like embarrassing but i got so self-conscious wearing that i still wore them because like i had to i bought them and my parents my mom wasn't gonna let me get away with buying something and not wearing it so i still wore them but i felt hella self-conscious and another thing i really wanted this was in high school was a canada goose jacket because my high school was kind of open campus like we had to travel outside out like outdoors in between buildings to get to different classes so we had like a science building a world language building and you know math building whatever so i wanted a jacket that will cover like down to my ankles or like close to my ankles and it felt like everyone had a canada goose and i wanted a canada goose but my mom i guess both my parents they were not about to let me spend a thousand dollars on a jacket even though i guess in my argument at the time against them was that i was like fully grown i'm kind of like 
and you're kind of an adult size at least for girls when you're in high school so i was like i'm not gonna grow much taller hopefully you're not gonna grow much wider so if i buy this jacket it's gonna last me forever but they still wouldn't let me get it and you know what actually i take that back not everyone had it just a good handful of people had it but i will say most of my friends still didn't i had like two friends that did but everyone else didn't have this jacket but for some reason because i was so hyper fixated on wanting this canada goose jacket every person that i saw that had that jacket just became like 10 people in my eyes and going back to how i value quality over quantity every time i've gotten like a dupe or i guess like a cheaper alter alternative to something i've always just wound up buying the actual like more expensive thing i wanted in the first place so for example i haven't gotten it yet but I've been wanting that North Face jacket, just like the basic black puffer, since forever. I, I would say probably three years by now, I've been wanting that, but it was like, I think it's around $200. And back in my freshman year of college, I just, I couldn't justify spending $200 on a jacket, but I ended up getting so many like $100 jackets or, or jackets that were under $100. And I probably have like three to five of these jackets. And if you add it up, total amount is more than 200. And none of them are bad quality, but a lot of them are just like thinner and they aren't heavy duty. And I guess I was trying to save money, but in the end, I'm still going to get the thing I originally wanted. And this is the same deal with AirPods. I, for the longest time, I, I guess like in high school, I didn't really have my own money. So I was going to drop like a hundred or two hundred dollars on airpods so i would get these like knockoff wireless earphones that weren't that weren't great during quarantine i was somehow convinced by the youtubers to buy those raycons because all of them were promoting raycons so i got them they're like they're okay but they're not the best and i ended up buying airpods i just like bought it sophomore year of college because i was working part-time at the time and it made my life so much easier because when you have like the whole apple ecosystem it just automatically connects whereas with like raycons or i guess non non airpods you will have to like manually connect it and disconnect from each device and another thing i'll ultimately buy are those like hunter boots the last time i got rain boots were back in middle school and I think I just got these like really cheap ones from TJ Maxx. They're probably like under 20 bucks, but the Hunter Boots, they're like 150 or $170. And at the time my mom was like, it hardly rains. Like when it rains, you don't really wear rain boots anyway. You just wear your sneakers or whatever. So I didn't end up getting them. But recently on Instagram, I've been seeing a lot of people just wear those Hunter rain boots with like a summer outfit, like a short skirt and stuff. And it doesn't even have to be raining. Like the pictures they take are fully sunny and it's low key, it's low key a look. So. Yeah, I'm gonna get it too and I guess I'll be wearing them when it rains and also during the winter because I could just wear thicker socks or something with it. But with me, I guess I could end up saving so much money if I just save up and buy that one thing I really like rather than buying like five dupes in an attempt to save money and not actually save money. But I feel like I'm straying a bit from my initial topic of luxury. So I guess my thinking is that you should tie luxury with whatever financial standing you're at because you never want to live above your means. Like for me... I would say anything above $500 for like one item, say like a really nice bag or a really nice jacket, even 500 is kind of pushing it, but anything above 500 to me right now is luxury. And I guess like say in the future, if I make like 500K or something, I could bump that number up to 5K. And I kind of want to talk about money. And also if anyone doesn't know, I actually ended up transferring colleges from a school in Boston to a school in LA. And part of the reason, it's actually a really dumb reason, but a big motivator to me, like wanting to apply to transfer was the idea of this like luxurious lifestyle in LA. Like it's glamorous, you see all these celebrities, you go to the beach and everyone, everyone looks pretty and it's just like bling everywhere. And obviously reality is not like that. Like LA is completely not like the movies. I think the movies are more like San Diego or like OC or something. I'm not that familiar with SoCal. But yeah, I was like chasing after this luxurious dream or I wouldn't even call it a dream. I would call it like a fantasy, like an abstract fantasy. When in reality, if I had scaled back my fixation and had discarded that notion of luxury, I might not have made the same decision. Even though I don't regret transferring, like I don't think it's it did me any harm, but I, for the most part, don't really enjoy my time in LA. And I feel like I would have had a happier college experience had I just stayed at my initial school in Boston. And I feel like another thing I really want to change is how I tie like self-worth or people's worth to money. I think a lot of Asian households or Asians in general kind of have this habit where our idea of people's self-worth is kind of traditional traditional in a sense that 
you know, it's tied to people's education, people's career choice, like what kind of social standing it has, say like a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. It's like, those are quote unquote high social standings and how much money someone can pull. But I guess that kind of idea also aligns with like traditional or I guess stereotypical idea of what luxury is. And since I'm already trying to distance myself from making luxury as like my ultimate goal or like what gives me satisfaction, I might as well also try to fix my thinking of tying worth to things like money, social class, education. And I heard in podcasts recently about the terms like mercenary versus missionary. So mercenaries are people that are motivated by money, like they make money to make more money. Whereas missionaries are people who recognize the importance of money but have are trying to like seek a deeper meaning i guess or at least that's what i've gathered from that podcast i guess like while there's nothing wrong with being like a mercenary and making and valuing money but i guess what i'm trying to do here is shift a bit away from the mercenary mindset although i feel like that's a bit conceited to say because i feel like that is something that those like ultra billionaires say like oh my god like money doesn't mean anything the meaning of life is something much deeper and like yeah that's true but I guess like I have to be realistic. Like yeah, money's important and some things that you could get with money do make you more happy. But I guess it's also not being too money hungry and feeding into consumerism and and spending your money on wisely because you're trying to buy those like luxury items. Yeah, I feel like that's all I have to say. I feel like anything else I say is just gonna be me talking in circles. So if you're still watching, thank you so much for watching. And this time I actually had a list of general points that I wanted to go through. So hopefully it was like a bit more structured. I feel like I still don't really know what I'm talking about. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.